Hi, Richard, Ian here. So, Richard, I'll try and keep this uh, brief, but just to give you an overview of how those QGIS projects work. And in fact, it's the same as any uh, desktop GIS project or desktop solution. So, the actual project file, which is uh, in QGIS's case, the one you've sent me, is this damn site. Um, what it actually does is it references information and layers that sit externally from the project. So, they're not actually stored within the project like a DXF might. I know, I think DXFs in and DWGs can also reference external information like images and rasters and that sort of thing but the majority of the layers stored within a DXF and CAD files is within the actual project unless of course you import stuff but with um, GIS packages and QGIS um, is the same as all of them all of the information is referenced externally so for instance, if we have a look at the um, the project file that you sent me, so let's just open that one. So what it's going to do, if it can't find the information that it's supposed to be referencing, it actually comes up with this little, this unavailable layers error, so to speak. And so what it's telling me now is that there are actually six project layers, and here they're listed in the layers panel, but none of them will render because it can't see any of them. Now that's because three of these, well actually all of them are on your system, um, and there are temporary temporary ones see these ones that are stored in a temporary folder it's like a uh, they are temporary layers which will be lost once you close down your project and start it up again you if you wanted to share these layers you would need to make them permanent um, and then store them in a project folder let's say and then there are three other layers the the dot the s dat the the shape file for the dams this is actually your dam layer and then this is the one you downloaded so those three layers are permanent layers but they are still referenced uh, on your system. So because they didn't come through in a project folder in that email, the project now is saying, okay, I'm gonna open these files, but I don't know where they are. So you would have needed to package everything together and um, then send that to me, and then this would have opened no problem. So let me show you how that might have worked. So I'm just going to stop that one. Okay, so let's say you start a new project. You would do something like this. You create a project, Oh, what are we going to call this? Let's call this Underberg. Ah, Underberg. Okay, so here's our project folder, and then within that, we can have a, a number of subfolders just to make things neat. I like to have things fairly orderly, so I got a project projects folder, and then something like this, like a data folder. And then inside the data folder, I might have spatial. And this is all up to you, really. You don't have to drill down this far. Um, I just like it this way because it keeps a nice structure. And I'll always know where to find stuff if I have a similar sort of format for all of my projects. Okay, so here we go. So we've got a project file, a project folder with subfolders, etc. And what I'm going to do is just take the, the layer that you sent me. Well, let's take these two layers. So we'll take this HGT. So I'm going to cut that one and put it in the raster folder. All right. And then I've just got a provincial layer here, which is from the demarcation board. So let me cut that one and put that in the vector folder. Okay. So I've moved those spatial layers into my underbird projects folder, and they're in data, spatial, vector. Right. So now what you would do is, let's say you had set up your project. So this is a brand new project. One thing I might do is um, open up the QGIS browser and just add a directory. This is, you don't have to do this. It just kind of makes things easier uh, when you're sifting through and sorting your data. So what I do is I just create a, a shortcut, so to speak, or a favorites uh, link to the project folder that I'm working with. So in time I might have 10 favorite folders going here at once and then when I s stop working with those projects I just turn those off and remove them. So all of this is a shortcut essentially to that uh, folder that I've just created on the desktop. So there we go, there's the information. That's what it looks like. If I have a look at the layer properties, it looks something like that. I can see where it's stored and it is in my Underberg folder and it looks like that. So the browser is a way, it's, it's, a, it's basically like an um, explorer in Windows or finder in, in Apple that allows you to sift through and sort your data. 
but it's specific to GIS data. So that's what the browser is used for. And I've got it as a tab here. You could al also have it as a separate window, but anyway, I've got it as a tab here, and that's what that is. So let's say I want to add some data to my project. I'll do that. Just add it in. And then zoom into my little project area here. Okay. So what you have done essentially is you have, uh, let's say we wanted to clip out a portion of my project or a portion of my raster. So we don't want that whole area, we just want to clip out a portion. So I'm going to go extract and then I'm going to select uh, extent on the canvas. So let's say it's that area there. Actually, no, that's maybe a little too big. So let's just try that again. Make it a little smaller area, something like that. Okay, there we go. Okay, so now what you would have had, and this happens when you run most algorithms, is you get an option to either save it as a temporary file or save it as a permanent file on your system. The default is a temporary folder or a temporary file. And if you just go ahead and run this, then what it does is it commits it to memory and then adds it to the project. So it'll look like that. So it's done essentially what we wanted, but this is a temporary file. So now if you shut down this project without um, saving this to a permanent place, it'll be lost. Okay, so it's just stored in memory as long as this project is open. So what you could have done instead, if I just remove this. Okay, there's two things you can do. Let's say you have a temporary file. You can create it or turn it into a permanent layer by doing this. So we're going to go right click on your, your, perm your temporary file. And we'll say export save as. And GeoTIFF is fine. We'll save it to the raster. It's a raster folder. It's a raster file. So we'll raster. We'll just call it DEM. Save. And then you would need to change any other information you have here. In this case, the coordinate reference system is uh, decimal degrees, WGS84, which is the European Petroleum Survey Group 4326, which I'm sure as a surveyor you, you probably know about these authority IDs. So it's in decimal degrees. So that's something we need to bear in mind if we're going to produce something like Hillshade later. So we can say OK. And there it is. And now that's the temporary one. That's the permanent one. If you want to double check if something's temporary or permanent, you just right click on the layer and you'll go to properties and you just check under information and then look at the path name. If it's in a temporary uh, folder somewhere, then you know it's a temporary layer. This is a permanent one, which is in our Underberg projects folder. This one we right click on go properties and we'll see that is in the temporary folder. So this is being stored in memory. So now these two are essentially the same so we can remove that. Okay. So three of those layers in your project were temporary layers. So you would need to make them permanent layers uh, up front because I imagine by now uh, you'd probably close this project down so those have been lost but that's what you would have need to do. Okay so now we can save this project so let's just go save as, and it's in here. So this is my projects folder. We'll just call the study area. There we go, study area. And that is now saved. Let's just quickly do some, create some more layers. So we'll go create a vector layer from the rasters. So we'll go contours and 10. This is all fine. So now this time, instead of creating a temporary file first, we'll just go straight to creating a permanent file and if you know that your the layer you're creating from an algorithm is going to be a permanent layer you can just go straight ahead and save it to your to your system and vector let's call this one contours okay and that's all fine so we can run that and see how long that takes it shouldn't take too long there we go, it's already been added, so I can close that. So there's my 10 meter contours. Okay, so now this is what I had shown you, but I didn't show you how to save it within a project folder and file. Okay, so then you're going to run and do those other applications. Um, and then what you would have is a project folder. Where is it now? It's on my desktop. Here it is. And then inside that, all our information. So it's everything's been referenced inside here. Now it's not always possible to keep them all in the same folder. What I sometimes do is I might have a project that's referencing information that's on a different drive because the original data is too big. 
but then I just know that for my system or for using that project it's fine for me but if I do want to save that project and share it with someone I am going to have to extract those layers and put them inside a project folder like this okay so that's how it works the QGIS project will reference all these layers and then uh, yeah, you just need to make sure that you don't break those links so the default setting for QGIS is uh, it saves the layers as what they call uh, relative path names so if we go to the project properties there's an option under general where it says save paths as relative now that is the default and what that means is as long as the layers that are being referenced by the project relative to the project are in the same folder then it'll open on any system and, and that and no matter what the the drive letter is so so everything that's in front of our parent project here this can all change as long as it's relative and these don't change then it can be opened by anyone the um, what used to be called absolute well it's still called absolute path names but this used to be the default and in this instance it had to be on the C drive in a folder called users Wilson OneDrive desktop under burger okay so it was an absolute path name and they realized that that was probably not the most beneficial or people weren't using that as much so they changed it to relative which makes a lot more sense and allows us to share our folders without having to rename all these path names okay so that's where the relative and um, absolute path names comes into it okay so this whole project is saved as relative so now I can save this close it down now to share that with someone I have to I just zip the parent project like that okay there we go so it's zipped on this side let's see how big that is yum, yum, yum. let's see properties okay 21 megabytes now you see the the original dam site that you sent me was six kilobytes so that's a really tiny so the project file is really tiny the thing that makes them big is the layers that it is referencing so if we go have a look in the underberg folder we'll probably see that the raster layer or well the raster folder is going to be the big one 31 megabytes okay so the the compressed version is under 21 and then the vector layers well not probably won't be as big 11 okay so you see how that works it's the the files and folders that it's referencing are the big are the big things and that's really small so that becomes an issue now when you want to save and share a project like this uh, with someone else because it's 21 megabytes you're going to either have to use a we transfer or Google Drive or something like that to share your data so unless oh, hold on a sec okay sorry about that um, where was I yeah so if you if you want to share this folder um, if it's if it's too big to email and, and in a lot of cases it would be because the um, spatial layers that it's referencing are, are pretty big then you might need to share it on disk drive or some sort of transfer site so that's how that works um, I don't I mean there, there's so much I can show you here if you are new to QGIS we could probably spend days on this and that's that's actually why I do offer training courses for people that are new to it um, but if you are looking for sort of continued support like this I can I'm more than happy to help you um, but uh, as you can see it, it it does become a bit of a rabbit hole that you fall down and there are tons of things to do but yeah let me know if this video has helped you and then give me a shout if there's uh, if there's anything you'd like to know to know further otherwise yeah we can take it from there cheers